Hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel. And today we have a brand new episode of First Appearances. But before we get into that, I want to say a hearty thank you to Rod Mead Sperry, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ori, and Kyle Bridget. Those gentlemen are supporting me on Patreon, and I really appreciate that financial support. If you want to support me on Patreon, a buck, two bucks, five bucks, I don't know. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Uh, check out patreon.com slash flipping through. That link's down below. If you also want to support me in a way that doesn't involve giving me money, uh, just hit like and subscribe and comment and share this video out. That helps me immensely, and I really, truly appreciate it. So, all of that being said, let's get right into first appearances. The first appearance of Sergio Aragones. Yes, he's been uh, on my list for first appearance people, like right at the top of the list. After I found out he was no longer going to be contributing to Mad Magazine, and I thought, what better time than look back on his amazing career at Mad Magazine. And of course, Mad Magazine had that exact idea with uh, Mad Magazine number 17, where they looked through his uh, his entire career. But I'm going to do it better than them. No offense. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Um, but anyway, uh, let's get let's get right into this. I'm going to stop babbling. So this is Mad number um, 76, released June. Wait, this isn't the right. This isn't the right screwdriver. Uh, June. Uh, June. January 1963. Our price, 25 cents, which is indeed cheap. Um, so this one is kind of special for a few reasons. It's not just his first appearance. Um, he went in, you know, guns blazing, right? So uh, this cover, a beautiful Norman Mingo cover, was written by... Sergio Aragones. So he wrote the gag of, you know, Alfred looking at a reference and painting the mad thing and it's all jacked up. That beautiful Kurtzman logo. Um, and of course, you know, it doesn't fit and there's misspellings and, uh, well, no, I guess that's not misspelled. It's just weird looking. Uh, so he wrote this. He wrote the cover, which Norman Mingo so masterfully painted. And... This is uh, his first appearance of the drawn-out dramas, which appear in various places all throughout the magazine. Um, so let's go start, like, just going through this. I'm not going... Oh, man. I think I got to do... Oh, man. This is such a... This is so good. Um, I got to find it. I forgot to find it. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is, like, a really awesome issue. Um even outside of um, Sergio's very first appearance. And here we have a mad look at the U.S. space effort. This being, I guess, chronologically, his first... No, his first appearance would be that. And now it's this. This is his second appearance. Um, but a mad look at the U.S. space effort. Um, now, I think that he had a, a certain fondness and affinity for um, this um this very first thing that he he wrote and drew for the magazine because even in the um mad number 17 there is some allusion to this and i think it's an image like that with the um the capsule um ramming into sputnik um but here we have his like just delightful sense of humor <laughs> things like um uh, you know, look at this guy with his tooth. I got to zoom in on that. Whoops, wrong direction. Um, his tooth tied to the rocket. And that, that awesome job of like um, graying out or leaving white the images that you want your attention brought to. So you want it on the man standing there. And of course, him noticing that. Um, how about this one with the... the a circle or a hole being sliced into it. It's just, uh, it's personally as a model maker, as a kid, I, I put together a lot of models and uh, like that, having the, the revel, um, authentic 
kit logo on there was pretty perfect. And of course, right here, I can't get that focused, but your door is open. <laughs> Let's zoom on out. Now, one thing that surprised me is going through this, I, I so closely associate ma the mad look at with Sergio Aragones. I assumed that this was his thing, right? Almost like uh, Prochias had the spy versus spy. Uh, like he was the inventor of it. It was his thing and then was taken over by other people. This was not his. He was... This is like, well, hey, we have this uh, gag, a mad look at. And you'll notice um, a mad look at different artists or writers handle it from time to time. And he just took it over. Like he became the man at it. So um, he kept doing it. Um, here's This is lovely right here. This a little drawn out drama right here in the corner which is Arthur, the avocado tree, falling down on some guy playing the um, the guitar. Here we have a worm crawling out of the apple. And then, <laughs> look at that. I mean, this is just, it's like such a simple drawing, but you can tell what has happened, right? I mean, like, he was throwing knives. He said he, he took off her bra. He took off her, her top, her swimsuit top or whatever that is. It's just, um, it's amazing how much he could communicate just visually. It really was stunning. So here we have, I'm, I have my eyes actually over on Doug Guilford's mad cover site. Um, and one thing to take note of is this um, 76 it is the first appearances of um, oh, drawn out dramas the marginals um, and after this moment th they went on continuously and he missed only issue 111 and 122 and he's um, trying to summarize all of them catalog every single one but anyway, so this is, uh, I, of course, am using Mad Cover site as a, um, as a reference because where else do you go? Where am I going to put this thing? I guess I got to just put it on the floor. Where else do you go if you need um, Mad information? So here's the next one up, which is Mad number 107, uh, released December 1966. 30 cents. It is cheap. Anyway, I have to be kind of... Look at this is one of them that I have. Pardon me. I just had a violent hiccup. Um, it has a detached cover. But um, I pulled this issue out because this is... This is the um, first appearance of The Shadow Knows. Now, if you don't know um, what this is in reference to, and it's only in reference by title, not by the content of it. Um, there was an old radio program and cartoon or like comic book character um, called The Shadow. Uh, his name was, um, what was his name? Lamont Cranston, wealthy man about town. And he had this friend, Margot, Margot, I forget her name. Um, but it was this great show, and he was uh, he was like a superhero. But it, I don't remember in other installments where they use this. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. I think they must have abandoned that, right? I mean, that's like that's <laughs> it's so married with the character, the shadow. Like you, you could say the shadow knows and be like, well, no, it's this. But if you use who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men, I imagine that they got like a phone call or something, like a letter, a strongly worded letter perhaps, saying, guys, you can't do that. So the premise behind this was awesome. And of course, utilizing his just perfect um, storytelling ability through visuals only, um, 
telling how people really feel about things. And this is a gag that's like happened in Mad Magazine a lot. Like I think in a recent issue, it was like, they say this, but what they mean is that. Um, and it's a very common comedic gag, but there's something about it I, I feel that works so much better on a visual medium versus written out. Um, because you can do sort of like these wild things and it's like, it's like pantomime, right? Fun fact that I learned from Kyle Bridget, Sergio Aragone studied pantomime in Mexico with um, Jodorowsky, the, the famous comic writer. Uh, he wrote The Inkle. He wrote, I don't know, some other stuff. I only care about The Inkle, if I'm being honest. Um, and here you have like that, right? Like, you know, chin up and chest out, but you know, this wouldn't work if it were written out or it'd be so kind of clumsy that it would, um, it would not really work out. I don't, this one doesn't really make sense to me, right? Like, okay, so it's the cop. I get it, like the cop is, the cop's the real crook, but wait, the crook is the real cop? I don't get that. Um, and I mean, this is, look at this, this is beautiful. So that, the gag was precisely that, sort of showing what's really on somebody's mind or the truth behind an action um, revealed by the shadow. Hence, the shadow is is what knows. Um, <laughs> like this guy is a peepin' Tom. Anyway, can I close this? Anyway, so this was the very first appearance of The Shadow Knows, written and drawn, of course, by Sergio Aragones. I have to be very careful with this one. I do want to say this. I, I, I love when they have all text covers. I don't know what it is about it. Um, I just quite enjoy it. All right. Uh, next one up, next issue we're going to be looking at in first appearances is another one of my favorite covers. Um, no. And this is when you see the art of this, uh, like in the background of pictures of the Mad Studios. And I don't know, like, I'm just curious, like, I'm curious of, about a lot of things on this. Um, yeah, so uh, this one is, oh, I'm sorry, Mad 147, came out December 1971, art price 40 cents, which is indeed cheap, considering, what does that mean? I guess there was inflation in 1971. Maybe? I don't know. Um, and here we have Future Shock. Now, we're getting into ones where, um, I think for the next few, I'm just sort of um, picking ones at random a little bit. Um, these are not um, especially special. I was going through madcoversite.com, and I thought, hey, that sounds cool. And it's sort of in the middle of its time there, so I grabbed it. That is the only reason I took this. Well, that and because it's not um, a mad look at. We've seen one of those. We know the gag of a mad look at. It's what he's most famous for. But I wanted to uh, sort of move on a little bit from that. Um, so here we have Future Shock. Let's zoom in. Now, this is like, I don't know. Mad did this around this time. And it's just like. Do, are, did people like forget how to read comics? Like, you, like, do they really not? Did did you think they didn't know how to read sequential art? Like, were the funny pages not a thing? Was there like some lost decade? So like, uh oh, you're gonna get smashed by a boat and then get hit with a hammer and then bit by a lion, and then a globe's gonna fall on you. And he's just like laughing his ass off at her. Um, Well, what happens? <laughs> oh my gosh, you gotta zoom out for that. This is like, um, this is like some of those um, Don Martin ones where it's like, you know, he takes like three pages to tell the joke and he gets this beautiful, like huge page of, um, of artwork. 
She really did know what she was talking about. Madame Lilio. Palm reading. Horoscopes. Cards. Tarot's. Anyway, uh, like one thing is if we, his artwork changes. I mean, that's what's kind of cool about this is like, there's a few things that I enjoy about this one in particular. I feel like he's getting more into the style that we're most used to. Um, kind of coming into his own, I guess, developing his own style a little bit more. Um, you could, of course, see his style. Like, I don't think if you looked at the Mad Look at Space Exploration, or the U.S. Space Race, what was that called? Um, the U.S. Space Effort. You wouldn't mistake it for anybody else, but there were, I don't know, like there's something about his people, like the noses and expressions and like the, the body posture and language that is notably different. I don't know. You know, I think one of the problems is with me is that I don't know, um, I don't know how to say what I'm thinking. Uh, but I love, look at, there's the Mad Zeppelin floating around up there. And I love this like cityscape. There's just so much great stuff in here. Um, so that is Future Shock from Mad 147. Now, what are we at? Um, oh yeah. Uh, so this is, I do a, I did a, a quite a large jump. So I think, I mean, this is, um, that was like 1970 and this is over 20 years later. This is like 27 years later. Um, man number 367, March, 1998, our price 250 cents, which is indeed cheap. Um, 350 in Canada. I still don't, I don't totally understand why Canada, everything's more expensive in Canada. I know that there's like, I know the answer is like the economy, but why, why is the economy? That's my question. Wait a second. Who did this? Oh no, this is, um, I thought maybe I accidentally picked, uh, one that he also did the border on, but he did not. Um, this is a Tom Bunk one, I'm almost certain. Um, but anyway, let's get into this because this is where, there, I mean, like, we could, uh, hold on. this is where, I mean, it's his style that I was kind of talking about where you have just like um, something so notably his own like I think almost like um, it's almost like uh, his strokes his pen strokes have become more confident like it's not a you know they're like shorter here whereas on these it's almost like um, if it's one line that's like well that's one stroke of the pen like here with that hair it's just uh, each little one and then the the hair on the line, you can kind of see that it breaks up a little bit more. It's also more angular, I think. I don't know. I don't know what it is exactly, but I think I'm getting close to understanding. Um, I, I picked this one out because I'm a very vain person, so a mad look at vanity it sounded uh, appropriate for me. <laughs> Which I, I absolutely love this. Um, so, <laughs> oh my goodness you know they they sell these now they sell it's uh you know they're not corsets but you can get them they're for for middle-aged dudes and it's basically it's like uh i forget what it's called um but they do that oh what a chump though he's going it's a pool party and this is like growing up i mean this was 1998 i believe is that what I said? Um, this was when I was about, I don't know, like 13, I think. Yeah, I was 98. I was 13 years old. And so this was like, um, for me, the most memorable part of Sergio Aragones. Um, like this style, this format of a mad look at. So for me, it was like absolutely who he was 
And uh, I mean, it was just, it was fantastic. Um, I got, okay, I got a little distracted down here. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's zoom in on some of these. Let's just, let's, whoop, let's have some fun. All right, here's this tubby dude again. Look at this woman's whipping him into shape. This is perfect. This is why you. This is why all what you have to do is just constantly. You just need to always um, take your partner down a peg or two. Okay, nothing can go wrong if you do that. Um, never encourage them to grow or improve. <laughs> So you see, uh, it's just like he, he goes from like things that are um, I mean, somewhat heartbreaking, if not funny, to things that are like kind of heartwarming. Right. And look at like I, I always enjoyed this, like the way he draws kids with their like tongues sticking out and their little round heads. Like they're all little round headed kids. Not it's only the adults actually look like people. All the kids have that same little oblong head. And here is like the. Um, what is it called? Like the uh, futility of vanity. Oh, that's like, oh, that's like profound. Maybe I should copyright that. That should be my, I'm going to write a book called the futility of vanity. So there you go. Look at, she gets to, she gets to pick out all the things that she wants, all the things that she thinks are going to make her a star. And you're nothing but a box of soap. I remember my dad said that to me once. He said, just remember, to all those people out there, you're nothing but a box of soap. And I said, I know, Dad. That is it. Oh, wait, here's some more. Um. <laughs> oh, you can't see it because I zoomed out. Uh, here we go. Oh, this <laughs> <laughs> they're in love they fall in love it's love at first sight right so he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna change myself so i can be what she deserves and she's like i just i don't want him to feel judged by me it comes back i presumably years later <laughs> i hope years later oh my goodness too far all right so let's go on to the next issue this was mad 367 this one just sounded pretty fun um and i'll we'll get to it in a little bit i'll do a little reveal uh this cover i don't i don't at all remember this cover uh, i mean i obviously own this issue i mean and i'm pretty sure yeah this came to my house um, oh, voted number one. That's like my show, the number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel. Oh, bad Mad employees. And it's by me, right? Anyway, um, I don't remember this at all. Um, what a bizarre, bizarre cover. This is Mad number 427, released March 2003. Oh, that's why I don't remember it. I had just shipped off for the Navy. Yeah, okay. I was in a uh, boot camp or just wrapping it up. So thank goodness my parents didn't throw this away. Um, anyway, that's why, I don't, that's why I don't remember that. And that's probably why I don't remember what's inside of this because I did not read it. Um, oh, and it is uh, $3.50, which is indeed cheap. Um, now, I mean, if you read... Not if you read. If you have um, watched this channel, you know my feelings on uh, um, Dave Berg are. Dave Berg is an incredibly talented artist, um, but lighter side is just some of his worst work of, of all time. Maybe the writing's okay. I think it like gets it sort of skews to be a little corny at times, but he the art I find. Um, I, I can't even stomach it. 
but this is very sweet. Um, and I, I don't know it, it, it with like mad artist passing away and retiring and all of this stuff. This does, um, this strikes me as very sweet and, um, sincere and just lovely. And so, um, this is after, uh, he, Dave Berg passed away and, uh, and maybe I'll just read this because they sum it up really well. Um, in our 50th anniversary issue, we printed the final installment of The Lighter Side, written and illustrated by the late Dave Berg, a legend of the magazine. Dave left behind countless fans, a giant body of work, and most startlingly, startlingly, startling, um, surprisingly, <laughs> a script for the next issue that he had written but not illustrated. Outraged by Dave's blatant disregard of his deadline, we had no choice but to divide his jokes among the mad artists and let them illustrate Dave's words however they saw fit. And I thought this was just like, I don't know, like what a cool, what a cool thing to do. And um, I'm, I, I sort of wish, wouldn't that have been fun to do with Sergio to, um, on his last thing, maybe have... Um, a few artists like imitate his style or do a big mad look at, but with other, like him writing than other people trying to do the, the silent art. I thought that would be kind of a cool send off, but you know, oh well. And so they, this is a veritable who's who of mad artists, um, both new and old. We have Peter Cooper, um, with his, like, I don't, it's just like, I don't, how do you even describe his style? It's like stencily type, type stuff. Jack Davis, George Woodbridge, um, John Caldwell, um, Mort Drucker, um, who else? Tom Bunk, Bill Ray, Bill Ray. I love Bill Ray. Um, Angelo Torres, Angelo Torres drawing some, like the, the famous, I don't know who this guy is, but I love it. I love his style. Paul Peter Porges, Sam Viviano, Duck Edwing, um, Herman Mejia, who I just, his style of caricature, I'm, I'm just smitten with. Bob Clark, Bob Clark too. Um, Al Jaffe, Paul Coker, and Drew Friedman. Drew Friedman has an awesome style too. Um, so it's like, it's everybody. Gosh, just imagine what if they did that for Sergio? Um, I mean, putting aside the fact that some of these people named are no longer around. Anyway, um, so here is uh, his, uh, Sergio's. And I thought Sergio did a pretty good job with Dave Berg's writing. Um, get your water here, only 50 cents. It is strange seeing his character saying things. Um, you're not s selling lemonade anymore? Nah, too much trouble buying the lemon, squeezing them, and the sugar. Look at there, all their little round noggins. Besides, why bother when grown-ups are dumb enough to pay the same amount for plain water anyway? You know, it's, you know, it's corny. That's it. It's corny. And I guess, you know, that's okay. All right. Not everything has to be um, not corny. Uh, but anyway, I, that was new to me seeing that Dave Berg thing. So I was, um, I was pretty pleased to, uh, to see that. Next up, we have um, uh, Mad 524. Um, these guys, whatever happened to these guys? Probably nothing interesting. Um, this is one of the more disturbing ones. But um, I, I went for this one because I noticed it was not its own thing. It was part of the Fundalini pages. And here we have um, Twerking Girl. <laughs> and it says Tots and Tiaras. And uh, there she is on stage. And it's like one of the more disturbing things I've ever seen. And I was I was kind of surprised to see that he had written it. Um, I don't know. Like, I'll tell you what. I've been, 
I've, <laughs> I've been following Kit Lively on Instagram, and that guy, uh, his his sense of humor gets so bizarre sometimes. I was like, this struck me as like something uh, Kit Lively might might write. Um, so I don't I don't even know I don't even know what to say about that. I have no commentary to add to that except. Um, yeah, no, I have nothing. All right, so this is uh, the penultimate appearance. This is in uh, Mad Number Three. This is uh, a pretty fun one. Whack a holes. Um, kind of a fun play on words. Um, but here we go. The scenes we'd like to see, and uh, this is. I loved seeing this because this is something that appears in a bunch of the older ones. Um, and you would see them written by like Jaffe or drawn by so-and-so. I don't know if anybody really had ownership on it, but fairy tales we'd like to see was something that popped up fairly often. And here we have, uh, I, I swear they've done Pinocchio a couple times, but here we have, of course, a, a more modern take on Pinocchio. You can kind of see, like, with his art style, I mean, this is, I don't know, it does look different, right? It's him still, um, but he's getting older. Um, I was pretty surprised, though, to see things like, you know, when, when I actually show his final, final work, how consistent it remains, um, even into his, I don't know, isn't he like an octogenarian, I believe? Um Anyway, it, I'll tell you, this is like one of the, this is just kids these days, right? So it's not that amusing to me. Um, I think that, I think, well, to be honest, Dave Berg ruined those jokes for me. Uh, kids these days, right? Like, oh, they got hot rods. Kids these days. And here we have his final appearance, Mad Number 17, um, Sergio's Mad Travels. Now, if you haven't picked this up, try to find a copy of it. You should really subscribe because they are putting out some more and it's a lot of people's final appearances. Um, and uh, yeah, most of this is retrospective. Um, but, you know, of course, uh, I thought that this was, this one was very poignant. It is. Can I zoom properly? I can't get any closer because I'm a dope and my camera sucks. But it's it's Sergio packing up his portfolio and leaving the mad office. But all throughout this, you can see, I mean, he's not, it's not like looking at Mort Drucker's final appearance, which was somewhat depressing because, you know, he's an old timer, right? Like you expect as people get older, their skills for <laughs> with the pen diminish, right? It's like not, anything on him it's just it happens to us all um but not apparently to Sergio uh it, he's still I mean it's very good still um but yeah look you have Arthur you have a mad look at drawings falling out you have the up the academy statue right there it's um it's a bummer you know and it's uh I'll tell you what though there is something nice about Sergio just, you know, retiring, right? His, his final appearance isn't due to death uh, or injury or anything like that. His final appearance is his own choosing. Um, and so that is, that's pretty good. And that's heartwarming, I think, in and of itself. So, ah, great. See, I'm still screwing everything up. Sorry. Anyway, um, so there we have the final appearances. First, the show's called First Appearances. First Appearances, uh, Sergio Aragones. If you have any ideas for future videos, if you have artists or writers that you think that I should focus on for future first appearances, let me know in the comments below. If there's an issue, you're like, hey, I want to see you flip through this issue, let me know in a comment below. If you love this hairdo, I kind of look like that that mom from Bob's Burgers. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Toodaloo.